and ask yourself, why was I created in the first place? Sometimes people really suffer in the world and you suffer so much and you go through a lot of tri troubles and trials and tribulations and you ask yourself, why was I even on this earth in the first place? Why, why am I suffering? Why, why is it just uh, my life is all about I go to work and work and work and do whatever I have to do and I don't understand why I'm suffering. I'm suffering. There are diseases everywhere. There are, are people are killing each other. Others are hating each other. And was that the reason why I was created? Does I do I have to wake up every day and I'm crying and and uh, I just don't understand the way out? Why was was I created in the first place? And I want to answer this question by giving you a couple of verses that uh, you'll be able to understand. So. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah um, 43, Isaiah 43, um, and then in verse 7. And I'll show you exactly why you were created. <laughs> Actually, what people think is not why they were created. People think that you're created to hustle. You're created born to suffer and things like that. No. See what the Bible says. Even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. Okay? I have formed him. Yeah, I have made him. You're, you're created for the glory of God. So that God might look at you and say, For sure this is my creation. For sure I take pride with this person. Are you, are you, are you giving God pride? Are you making God proud with you? Are you really doing the reason... Are you following the reason why he created you? Or are you just suffering and saying, Oh, what really happened? What's wrong with me? I have to do this and this and my life is uh, messed up and things like that. But of course, our life got messed up and uh, we fell in the time of Adam. And uh, of course, this, this curse, this sin has already followed us so many times. And that's why we have to suffer every day. That's why we have to suffer and always cry every day. Why did God create us? Why did God create us? Let me also show you another verse to understand why you also created. Genesis 1, 26. We were created to have dominion over the earth. Do you know you're supposed to dominate the earth? But right now, people are changing and they're saying, because of uh, climate change, you see, we have to be in perpetual balance with nature. We're not created for nature. Nature was created for us. And when you see these people talking and saying that, uh, you know, humanity is getting, we are so many in the world, we need to, you know, do something with this population, then there's something really wrong. Because we are, cre we are created to dominate the earth. And the Lord said, and, the, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Dominion means one, to dominate over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every keep creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That is another reason you are created, to have dominion. To rule over things. So don't let things rule over you. I see people when they go to game parks and you hear somebody uh, killed an animal or something happened. You, are, you kill somebody because of an animal? Yes, I know it's not good to poach animals. But we have dominion. So you rather jail someone than to shoot that person to death. Because that's not, that's not what God created. And uh, Satan is trying to lie to this world. And make like the animals have dominion over human beings. No, that's, that's not true. But the main reason why we were created is this one here. Do you know you were created so that God can have pleasure with you? Can just look at you and has pleasure? Look at Revelation 4.11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive all glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they were created. You are created for the pleasure of God. You are not created so that uh, you can just please yourself. Are you seeing the way people please themselves? People, they are pleasing themselves and they are doing all those weird things that they could ever think. Have you seen them? Yeah? Have you seen? Hmm? Have you seen people are so proud with themselves? Have you seen something called the Pride Month? People are, what are people here proud about? Themselves? People are proud about themselves? 
and they're enjoying themselves and they're doing all the nasty evil things and they're saying ah oh, it's my pleasure if it makes me happy then i'm happy if it makes me feel like this then it's okay no you are created to please god not to please yourself that's the reason why you're on this earth okay okay this is the reason for god's pleasure and also another thing people have been saying no no we, we need to finish uh, children and we need to plan parenthood. We, are, we need to plan this and that. Now, let me ask you. Let me ask you one thing. Are we to plan the world <laughs> or are we to fill the world? Okay? Are we to plan or fill the world? Who makes the rules? God makes the rules or some guy, some some gates of hell guy just wakes up one day and decides, no, 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 no. you have to plan yourselves plan how if god says replenish look and god bless them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the falls of the air and over the every living thing that moves upon the earth so we were created to replenish the earth to fill the earth to be fruitful to multiply and fill the earth so so if you're trying to uh, you know finish up children and saying uh, let's do this no you have to plan yourself if uh, you have more than two kids is a problem come on this is what god created you that's your purpose in life that's your purpose in life and you see this one is happening hmm? let me show you uh let me show you this and you and you'll wonder the u.s abortion rate reached a historic in 2017 let, let me just show you here uh how, what it says that a number of abortions about 862,000 abortions in 2013 2017 now i don't know about 20 2021 uh 2021 let, let me see how how many have there been but anyway, whatever, you, you understand that it's really huge. Let, let's just go with the number that you've seen. 800,000 people being aborted. Now, for sure, are we living the purpose of God? Are we living the purpose of God? No, we are not living the purpose of God. God did not create us to finish each other. Okay? Another thing, do you know you are created to be God's workmanship? Okay? To work for God, to, to fulfill His will here on earth. The same way... Uh, the angels fulfill the will of God in heaven. Do you know angels are God's messengers in heaven? But here on earth, we are the messengers of God. We are ambassadors of God. See, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in him. He ordained that we walk in the, his workmanship, in his good works. We do good things. That's exactly why God created us. Are you seeing this one and you're still there and saying, no, 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 I was not created for that, not for me to do good, but you're God's creation. He created you for this. Let me show you another thing here as well. Hmm? Do you know uh, that uh, uh, you are created to praise God? Okay, you are created to praise God. Let me show you Isaiah 43. 43 verse uh, 21 you are created to praise god when you walk you tell god this is you god look at those creation look at those uh, islands that you've made look at those rivers look at all this but the world is making you stay in cities and live in places where you can never appreciate anything of god you're only appreciating man's creations these people I have formed for myself, they shall show forth my praise. You will be praising God, but you don't want to praise God. What do you want to do? You just want to praise yourself and you say, wow, look at that car, look at that uh, house, look at that building, look at all those things that man has created. You want to praise yourself instead of praising God. You should be saying, hallelujah, God, you created us. You created all things. Look at those birds of the air. Look at, the, look at those mountains. Look at all those things. Yeah? Have you ever looked at mountains and you're like, wow, all these things were created by God? All these things were created by God? So many times. And you're always wondering and asking yourself, how comes? Why? Let me tell you, God created all these things. So that you can always praise him. And you can stand somewhere and you can always say, wow, God, 
I could not imagine you created all these things. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for creating all these things. Another reason you are created is to be his friends. Do you know you are the friends of God? Do you know you are a friend of God? Yeah. Do you know you can be a friend of God? <laughs> there are so many people in the Bible who are told that this guy was a friend of God. He was a friend of God. See, henceforth, I call you not servants. God does not call us servants. No. For the servant knoweth not what, is, what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I, have heard, but that I have heard of my Father, I have made known to you. That's why the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ who are created to serve God and to, I mean, not, uh, uh, of course, to serve God in one point, but also to be his friends. We can talk to him the way you talk to friends and you can tell him, Jesus, this is how I feel. Hey, uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, for yesterday you provided for me. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, God, because you created this mountain. Thank you, God, because you created me. Thank you because I am not sick today. Thank you because of all these things. Thank you, Lord. You are my, you are a friend of God. Remember, there are people in the Bible who are friends of God. Enoch, Elijah, other many, many, many people who are after God. And look at even David. David, David was, uh, he did so many things. And of course, uh, let me show you, David. Uh, David, he, he did something wrong. He, he, he fornicated and he did, and he killed someone. But why does the Bible talk and say that David was a man after God's heart? He was a man after God's heart because friends sometimes, you can argue with a friend and you can have a problem with your friend and sometimes you're not, uh, you've wronged your friend. But it doesn't mean that you're not friends. You're there for each other in good and bad times. And that's why you cannot lose your salvation because you did something wrong. But the only thing that can make you not be saved the only way that you can know, surely I've never been saved in the first place, is if you're not even a friend of God. So how can you be a friend of God and you deny him? You remember what the Bible says? The Bible says one thing, that uh, on that day many will come in my name saying, Lord, Lord, did you not prophesy and cast out demons in your name? And, and he will tell you, away from me, I never knew you. Can you tell that to your friend who you know and you've been together and you've been having a good time together with that person? Can you tell them I don't know you? No! It's because these people have never been friends of God. Because the Bible tells us he created us to be his friends. So if you're a friend of God, he will know you. And there's nothing that can change that. He knows you by name. Okay? Also another thing, do you know in the Garden of Eden... In the Garden of Eden, uh, God created humanity to take care of that garden. But people did not want to take care of the garden. They wanted, uh, you know, to go against God. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. You're just supposed to sit in the garden just to dress it and to keep it, to make sure that everything is working well. And you're eating from the garden and you're enjoying as you're praising God and as you're doing. But man, man, man. He did not want that. He wanted to please himself. He did not want to look at the things that God has created. So what's the purpose? What's the purpose? What's our duty? What's our duty? What's the duty of man? What are we supposed to do to make sure that we please God? What are we supposed to do? We are supposed to do this. The whole duty of man is to please God. Okay? The whole duty of man is to please God. Let me show you this. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You are not created for all the hassles that you're trying to run and to build so many buildings and to, to buy cars and to do all those things that you're really rushing after and to make your name great, to become politicians, to become great mighty men. No, that's not the duty of man. The duty of man is to fear God and to keep his commandments. And if you fear God, it means you will do his will and you will be his friend. You will be the friend of God because you do his will and you will keep his commandments. Now, commandments, this does not mean you go back to the commandments of Moses. No. Now, the commandment that you have to do is only one simple command. You believe the gospel. 
This is the whole work, okay? Let me show you. Uh, let me show you. There's only one command that you're supposed to do. Only one command. Only one command. And I will show you. This is in... Uh, it's supposed to be in uh, James. Uh, is it James or what? This is the command of God. Let me let me read for you this. I don't want to take much time. Uh, but let me show you. I have to show you this one. This is the whole command. The whole command. Yes, the whole work. John 6.29. Let me show you this one. John 6.29. This is the whole command. The whole work that you should do. There is no other work that you should do. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. That's the only work that you need to do. And when you believe in God, you believe in Jesus who was sent by God the Father. You believe in him. You believe in the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How that Christ died for your sins, he was buried and rose again. According to the scriptures, you will be able to understand why God created you. Because you will go back to being a friend of God. Are you a friend of God? Are you wondering and asking yourself, why did God create me? Why am I hustling? Why is my life so pathetic? Why are things not working out? It's because you're not a friend of God. You don't pray. You don't seek him. You don't do his will. But yet, you want miracles and faint. And the vain prophesying. That's why people are always in churches running, looking for prophecies and looking for things which don't even make sense. Jesus just told you, do my work, which is just believe the gospel. Simple. Hope that has been a blessing to you. Hope it has opened up your eyes.